Hello, welcome to a demo of Greylog Operations and Security. Before we start the demo, the Greylog platform is an open log management platform used by many organizations worldwide and is free to download and run on Linux, including deployments using Docker. Greylog opens and enables thousands of organizations to centralize, collect, and analyze logs from all of your sources in your IT ops and security environments. Greylog is comprised of two enterprise products, Greylog Operations and Greylog Security. They run on the same platform installation, use shared data, and require no additional infrastructure. You have the choice of cloud or self-managed, allowing you to decide what's best for your organization's needs. Greylog Operations will give you increased visibility across your IT environment, allow you to search volumes of log data in seconds, get alerts for issues that matter to you in your organization, and give you simplified audit and compliance reporting. Greylog Security gives you the functionality you need without the complexity and cost of traditional SIM solutions. Here are some highlights of what you'll get with Greylog Security. Intuitive cyber incident and anomaly detections, Sigma rules for automated alerts and notifications, enhanced security capabilities for security and ops collaboration, and investigations tools to help build evidence through your incident discovery. The objective of Greylog is to take what you see on the screen here, where logs are hard to understand and hard to gain knowledge and value from, and turn them into something that looks something like this. Messages are readable fields and information making sense to the naked eye. They're easy to read and easy to interpret and very easy to build visualizations and dashboards for immediate and long-term value. When setting logs into Greylog inputs, you gain the flexibility to process logs through pipelines and rules to make sense of your data. Enriching your logs with lookup tables like IP geolocation or asset tables of your critical infrastructure, pipeline rules will categorize your logs and identify similar events, different types within your sources. This directly enabling access to the intelligence in your centralized log data. Greylog Security and Operations is here to take your time and knowledge intensive tasks and bring them to the forefront for all layers of your IT stack. Greylog Security and Operations is a powerful and scalable single pane of glass log management and security solution designed so IT professionals can gain increased visibility across the entire IT environment and to get a clear view into what's going on in their organization. Whether you're keeping an eye on your onboarding process or configurations for employees or monitoring your capacity limits for your IT infrastructure and applications, Greylog is here to provide you and will integrate with many of your different solutions in your ecosystem. Let's get to the demo, and just a reminder, please ask questions throughout, and I'll answer them at the end of the demo. Once your data has been centralized, Greylog uses pipelines and rules to allow you to parse, enrich, and normalize your logs, and quickly gain value. So let's just bring this up really quickly. Under System and Pipelines, you'll notice I have a few pipelines created on the left-hand side. Inside each one of these pipelines, there'll be multiple stages. These stages will be used to parse logs, modify logs, or enrich them with different things like geolocation, threat intel, or custom lookup tables. In this case, under some of the rules, you might have them as routing rules. Routing rules allow you to create a rule so that when a given message or message in a field or your simple information coming in matches, you will route this to a given dedicated stream. So as you separate your messages and your logs into separate streams, this will allow you to sort your logs like firewall logs or Windows endpoint logs or different kinds of sources so that you can break those out and search for them independently in Greylog. When it comes to creating rules, you have some choices in Greylog. Through the code editor, as you see here, I have some Bitcoin logs that are being parsed. And when you edit the rule, you'll see the raw code editor where you're inserting the actual code itself to parse the rules. If you're familiar with this area, it's very simple for those that know. If you don't, you have another option. You have the ability to go into the new rules wizard. You create your rule and inside here, you'll have the ability to run the functions and select what type of options you want to choose to parse your logs and flow through that. Once you've done that, it does allow you to view this in the individual code editor as well. Inside of managing the rules, you can from here pivot and start to look at data adapters to enrich your logs. So under system and data adapters, under lookup tables, you'll notice we have here under lookup tables and data adapters, we have a variety that are built in to illuminate for many different types of functions within the illuminate schema. 
In this, if you're going to click on a data adapter and create one, you'll have a drop down list of many different types for Active Directory lookups, Alien Vault, lookups for Thread Intel, looking up an entry in a common delimited file, DNS lookups, many other types for GeoIP databases for MaxMind, gray, gray Noise, as well as an HTTP API path, and many others for ThreatFox and IP info for Geo lookups. With Illuminate installed, your sources will be parsed, categorized, enriched, as I stated. They have many dashboards right out of the box. So when we go into Enterprise under Illuminate, you'll notice I have all of the packs installed here. And most of these packs you'll see are specific to individual products. These are products that we've got dashboards for, which could include such things like Cisco routers, Carbon Black Defense, Fortinet, and others that you can see. Others are specific around geolocation enhancements. So we've got MaxMind databases and IP info here. If we scroll on through the list, there'll be multiple other types in here as well. And you'll notice each one of these can be activated or deactivated. And most of this data is also available to you in content packs. We also include multiple types of data in content packs for Illuminate, which I'll highlight here. These are all the different packs that will give you dashboards and alike. So under dashboards, you'll see a, a mixed list of Illuminate dashboards here. And this will include all of the different types of dashboards related to the Illuminate content, giving you value right out of the box. Now that you have data in one place coming into Greylog, this is where search kicks in. Search is where everything starts with Greylog. So let's have a look. In Greylog, you'll see at the top left hand corner, you can select your time frame. So I'm going to select it within the last hour. And when you do that, you'll automatically start to see logs based on when they've been coming in. You can check the blue box and you can select whether you want relative or absolute by calendar or keyword. We allow keyword searches to be done, say within the last five minutes, within the last two days, etc. Once you've started to select your time frame, you can narrow down your logs to the specific stream. As you mentioned earlier, you might be bringing your logs in and indexing them into their own separate streams for firewalls and different kinds of things inside of Greylog. So you can do that as well. In this case, I'm going to actually just add Windows log event messages, Windows security log messages, and I'm going to add Sysmon messages. And I'll just hit execute on that. And now what I'm going to do is look at the user underscore name field. This field will then hit on what results appear under that field name. In this case, user JDAR. These fields are visible. When you click the side menu fields, you'll see all of the fields here that are ingested and indexed into Greylog. And you can search the fields. In this case, I know the actual schema for user underscore name is actual logon user and actual in the, uh, in the database. So when you click on the logs, you're going to see now what's appearing. So you're noticing here that these are from Sysmon messages. So to start getting some data, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to process name, click on process name and show top values. This will show the top values for the processes that are running that used username login JDAR. You can take this widget, which is a table and we can duplicate it. And what we'll do is make a quick change. And we'll change this to a bar chart. Now that we've updated to a bar chart, we'll just update the widget. You can change it. You can go in here and change the table if you wish. Name it with what you like. And hit save. Create the title and save it and continue on with your search. That way you can add more things along the way. So you've got these represented in a couple different ways. I'm going to add one more. I'm going to duplicate it again. And I'm going to slide this up. And instead of using the bar chart, just going to do a quick change. And I'm going to change it to pie chart, just so you can see the differences between the two. Now that you see differences in here, of course, you can hit save again. If you've saved this, you can also click on the top right hand corner and you can export it to a dashboard so you can name it and save it under dashboards. Other dashboards that we've got included in this data, you'll notice I have a dashboard here for random user data. Just got to find it here really quick. Actually, it's a search. And in the user data, you'll notice I have quite a mix of information in this data source. You'll notice the logins, where the countries are coming from. And 
At the bottom, you'll notice I've got some interesting things added to the data. They're called decorators. So in the actual table form, you can actually go in and add decorators into your data. So here I've specified an, a URL to look like a clickable link. And this link will take you to actually an image. And you'll see here you're adding the actual field names you want to have. So you can add more fields and keep that in the widget. Also in the raw data, when you scroll down and open the raw data, we do have a username added to the watch list. Greylog security allows you to go through particular fields that are context sensitive. So for example, the username field, this has been clicked on under username on the bottom, and we've added this user to a watch list. This can create a watch list and a notification for the user. When you click on a hash value like MD5, SHA-1, 256, et cetera, it actually gives you context in Greylog security. Greylog security will allow you to activate a lookup for intelligence lookups for Alien Vault, OTX, Malshare, or Virus Total. You can also do this with IP addresses. You can check an IP address against the Intel sources to see if it's a bad IP potentially. So this is a functionality of Greylog security. Additional information we can go through, we have another search here we're going to execute on this particular user, Jay Duffield. And in this user, you can take advantage of the Greylog dashboards and parameterized search. Parameterized search allows you to create a string value like this. And what it will allow you to do is declare the parameter and set a field. And this field will be, in this case, from a dropdown. And we're going to select the values of a field and name the field user underscore name. And what this will allow you to do is create a dropdown on the right hand side for the given user. And this will allow you to see what usernames are in the data. So as you see here, you can save this dashboard and just has, have this as a dropdown menu. But what I'm going to do in this case is I'm going to select Mr. Duffield again, and just going to find the user underscore name again, and it's at the bottom here. And what I'm going to do is click this and insert into view. So this is an illuminate dashboard to do an investigation drill down on a particular user account. So if you have something going on with a particular user, this dashboard and a parameterized dashboard will create a search and give you a return of a dashboard for everything related to that one particular user. So you're going to see this for the usual user's successful login attempts, failed off attempts, and a variety of other things in this dashboard. You'll see network activity. So you'll see some things going on with network over time, networks based on destinations, and you'll see other things like network connections by top 15 ports being used by these connections. So this is a great way to do an investigation on a particular user. Now that you've created searches and saved them as dashboards, you now have the ability to create reports. Reports are built from your saved dashboards. So as you're building out dashboards and thinking about reports, you may want different visualizations for dashboards versus reports. Reports very commonly are used for compliance purposes as you may not have reports to deal with real-time events in your data, but you might have to create reports and send them off on a schedule so you can look back at them at a later date. So let's have a quick look. You'll see here under the enterprise menu under reports, I'm going to look at one report that I created for PowerShell for some of the PowerShell, PowerShell uses we talked about earlier. So here is where you can define the title and the subtitle. You can upload a logo that will appear in the report. You can create description with a port and you have the ability to set the time zone. So your reports can be very specific to the region that you're in. You might have multiple Greylog instances, so this might be very important. You can set your page size for A4 and letter and of course set your orientation of the page. Here you'll see now all of the widgets and all of the dashboards that have been created within your instance. So if you scroll down here, you'll see near the bottom, we have a couple that have been called PowerShell. In dashboards, one's PowerShell bad, PowerShell bad dashboard. And you'll see at the top on the right hand corner, you can mo modify and edit the configuration of the actual report. So in this instance on the right, you'll see what I'm reporting on are just these two individual widgets. You'll see the message count and then some details around, you know, this hacker PC and the user, what they were doing. 
and then some of the raw messages you'll see here over time with the timestamps. But on the left hand side, you'll see you can send this on a regular basis, select a frequency. And in this case, we can do hourly, uh, daily, weekly, or monthly. And then in the actual report, you can put it in an email, send the email body and the details, set your destination of people that are inside of Greylog, and email your recipient inside of Greylog. So that is where you configure your reports inside of Greylog. Events, alerts, and correlation engine in Greylog are built for you to take your searches, save them as events, enabling automation of the search, sending you notifications when these events occur. Some events are correlation events that so could be between two completely different types of logs or messages that will tell a real story as to what's going on and alert you for that event. Let's take a quick look. In this instance, what I've done is under alerts, I already have seen some alerts popping up on the alert console where I've got a particular server being monitored for its disk utilization. And you'll see here, we've got multiple hits for 90% full and below you'll see I have a disk full correlation and you'll get the detail with the host name and the source IP address. So to look at how I did this is under event definitions. I have a few definitions defined for disks. I have disk 90% full and disk 98% full. So let's just pick the 90% full. And what I've done is created a title. The filtered aggregation is based on the actual search. So this is the actual search query that I would insert in the gray log search bar. And this will allow you to get a result of a log with this search. So as you step through this event and you click on fields, this is where you can add additional custom fields to the message so that when you want to send it as an alert, you get information as well as the alert console. The notification can be attached. And in Greylog, we have multiple notification types. I'll go through those in just a minute. And of course, the summary of the given event. So what I have done here is in the alerts and events, you will see that there's a disk full correlation. And the reason why is under my alerts, the disk full correlation is strapping to specific events together. So when you check this configuration out, you'll notice I have the ability to define this as a event correlation versus a filter and aggregation for a particular event. And then you'll see below that this is where I have selected event one was the disk at 90%. And I'm looking for this within five minutes, it should happen at least once. And then event two defined is when disk utilization gets to 98%. So that will then enable a specific message in the alerts menu for that given correlation. And this is the correlation that you're seeing right here. And of course, it's sending the information with host name and IP address. Once you've done this in your event definition, you'll notice with the disk notification that I have, I don't have a notification defined for it. And what you can do is add a notification. And what I've done is I've created a bunch of different types of notifications. I've got Discord alerts, I've got MS Teams alerts. So what you can do is under notifications, you can create a new notification, create a title, description. And in here, you'll see a bunch of different ways you can send notifications. If you subscribe to PagerDuty, you can send PagerDuty notifications. Slack and Discord, they're combined. Microsoft Teams, you can fire your own custom script. So if you're doing some automation in your systems, you could trip off a script that would get the data out for you. You can set an email notification, an HTTP webhook notification. So if you've got a ticketing system or other that you can send a webhook notification to, you can do that as well. So this is how alerts, events, definitions, and notifications are all tied together. Greylog Security introduces pre-built dashboards and alerts, which include Sigma rules and anomaly detections to alert you on possible threats and alerts that may occur against your data. So let's have a quick look. You'll see on the left hand side under security menu at the top, you'll have a variety of menus here for overview, user activity, host activity and network activity. You'll see on these individual dashboards that all of the data here is related to what's being ingested into Greylog and providing you categories and summaries of data that's existing in your network. You can from any one of these pivot directly into the logs. So if you move down into user activity and you see particular login events for particular users, you can pivot into those individual items within the data. You can go into host data and look at what's going on in all of your hosts and look at what data has been accumulated for the individual host names themselves and pivot directly into that data from here. 
The network activity you'll see here with multiple different sources of network activity from different firewalls and networks. You'll see you can also drill into the IP addresses in use, different devices in use, and look at what port usage it might be in the data. When you pivot and move into anomaly detectors, you'll notice we do have anomalies here. In this case, there are no particular anomalies, but if there is a high grade anomaly count, you'll be able to pivot directly into that data. The anomaly detectors you can enable. We've got a few enabled here, or you can actually go in and create your own anomaly detector. So from within this menu, you have the ability of creating anomalies for the data that you have in your environment. You can also pivot and go into Sigma rules. So we've introduced Sigma rules into Greylog and Sigma rules can be added by going to the repository at Sigma HQ. And you can bring in rules for multiple sources. Windows, as an example, has a long list of Sigma rules. These rules can be edited. And in the rule, you'll see it's a text format and you can modify the rule or add to the rule and even create your own rules. Once doing this, this will enable the individual rule to have an event definition created for it individually. And then from there, what you'll do is automatically assign multiple notifications for your rules. You'll see at the bottom here, you can set your notification types on your data. Greylog Security also offers asset enrichment into your logs. Looking into Greylog, you have the ability to add user assets and machine assets. You can add these manually in Greylog and put specific field information in there. You have the ability outside of doing it manually, you can actually go in and create a new source for LDAP or Active Directory to sync your users and your assets or computers inside of Active Directory. What this allows you to do if, with machine and user assets is allows you to search your logs by incorporating context into your logs. So lookups are performed and attached to the logs. So in this instance, I'll show you if I search for this particular asset host name, you'll notice it'll do a quick search into the logs for the asset and it will show logs that are associated for it. If I open up one of these logs, you'll notice looking at the log, you can expand it and you'll see the details in the actual log itself for the asset. This adds context over time so you can see different IP addresses and different things with the asset and ensure that the right user is attached to the right asset. Next, let's talk about the feature for security for investigations. Greylog has introduced a new tool instead of Greylog to do investigations by collecting data throughout your Greylog instance. So as you have logs and events that occur, you can add them in one central area so that you can complete an investigation end to end and show this to those who, that need to know. So let's check this out really quick. What you'll see here is we have a bunch of investigations that have been started. This particular investigation, possible credential theft. If you click that, you'll see it shoots a drawer out of the side. There's been some information added to this. You can either create a brand new investigation with the name who it's assigned to in Greylog and then set the priority and status and note, or you can go into your, your logs directly and initiate one from there. What you can do, as you'll see on the left, on the right hand side, we've got a menu here that is showing this investigation is active. So as this is active, you can go into your logs and I'll show you here with some logs that I have. And in my logs, I'm going to use a particular log message as an example. I see a particular message here that I don't like. So what I can do is look at this log and I can click this investigations link and add to investigation. That means it's now added. If this was a dashboard, you'll be able to right click up to the right hand side and you'll add one to the investigation. So as you're adding data, you can add it and keep adding different log entries. You can add searches, dashboards, and individual events, create notes and add notes in the case. And then once you close it, all of the information has been attached to that individual investigation. So again, under security investigations, this is a great tool to manage gathering data to provide intelligence into your logs. Greylog operations allows you archiving and audit log capability. So here you'll see under enterprise audit log, you'll have all the events occurring in the system. You have the ability to filter it, to query it, and export the results to JSON or CSV. Under enterprise and archives, you'll notice you have some configurations you can build for how you want the archives to go. You'll have multiple compression algorithms. You'll also have the checksum types in encryption, and you'll also archive by stream. You can manage backends by going to 
S3 buckets or the file system. And in your overview, you have multiple ways of archiving the catalogs by individual results for bulk entry and exporting your results.